Our dear students, or today we'll see what do we mean by optoelectronic junction devices. So when we use this word optoelectronic, so here we are going to see the working of electronic devices under the influence of opto, that is light. So under the influence of light, how the electronic devices are going to work and three types of devices we will see in this section. So we'll have the topic as optoelectronic junction devices. So this will be our semiconductor junction devices. Junction means P and N type material. When you connect them, you form a PN junction. So a PN junction device only. But this device are going to work under the influence of light. So either they will convert light energy into electrical energy or they are going to convert electrical energy into light energy. So here in this we are going to study three types of devices. One is photodiode. Now this photodiode is one which will be co converting light energy into electrical energy. Then second we will be having light emitting diodes LED as the name suggests. This will be converting electrical energy to light energy. and then we have solar cells which will convert the light energy from solar into your electrical energy into electrical energy okay so these are the three types of devices what we are going to see and how they are going to work so let's start with the topic optoelectronic junction devices till now we have read about how semiconductor diodes that is pn junction diodes behave under electrical inputs so we have seen that forward bias and reverse bias connection of the diodes and only by the influence of electric voltage or electric power how these semiconductor diodes will behaving we have seen that now let's look at how they react to photo excitation that means when light falls on it what is the effect of that device of that semiconductor device these are optoelectronic devices. Now the devices, the semiconductor devices which will show an effect when light is incident on it. So those are called as optoelectronic devices. So they are related as they can convert electrical energy to light energy or light energy to electrical energy. So these are devices in which carriers are generated by photons. Now a carrier's word we know because we have seen uh, holes as a majority charge carriers in p-type semiconductor and electrons as majority charge carriers in n-type semiconductor and now here we are also using a word called as photon photon will be the smallest particle of light so light is made up of photons so whenever we say light is incident we say photons are incident so under this concept we are going to study three devices one is photodiode to detect optical signals. So photodiode is one which will convert light energy to electrical energy so you can detect light. Second is light emitting diode LEDs. So LED is one which will convert electrical energy to light and third one is solar cells which will convert light energy to electrical energy. So here we will first see the concept of photodiode. Now photodiode will be a PN junction diode only as we have earlier studied PN junction diode. In that way only we will be having here p-type semiconductor and n-type semiconductor. In p-type semiconductor we have holes as majority charge carriers and we will be having electrons as minority charge carriers. Similarly in n-side semiconductor we have electrons as majority charge carriers and holes as minority charge carriers holes as minority charge carriers and here we will be having your depletion region and this device will be working in reverse bias condition so reverse bias condition how it is formed when we connect this external voltage you can see that this terminal is minus this terminal is plus so the negative terminal is connected to the p-type semiconductor and positive terminal is connected to the n-type semiconductor. This gives a connection which makes the diode to bias in reverse direction. So it is called as reverse bias. So here on this depletion region we are showing 
falling of light. Light is incident on the depletion region. Now light, whenever we speak about light, incident of light, light is made up of particles which are called as photons, which are called as photons. Now these photons, the energy associated with these photons will break the covalent bonds between the atoms in this semiconducting material. Now say this in this semiconducting material, we are say for example, we are using silicon atom. So every silicon atom, say this is one silicon atom, this is another silicon atom, this is another silicon atom, this is another silicon atom. So every silicon atom will make a bonding with its adjacent atom. So we have seen this bonding. So in that bond, you will be having one valence electron from each atom. So there will be a pair of valence electrons, pair of valence electron, which will make this bonding pair of valence electrons pair of valence electrons so when a photon when a photon is going to incident on this covalent bond that energy will break this covalent bond and the electron will come out and become a free electron it become a free electron it will come out and it becomes a free electron and the vacant place of the electron will be assumed as a hole, as a hole. This will be assumed as a hole. So whenever a photon is going to incident on this covalent bond of semiconducting material, it is going to generate a free electron and the vacant place of the electron in the bond will be taken as hole. So we say when light falls on semiconducting material, when photons are incident on the semiconducting material, every photon will generate an electron hole pair. Every photon will generate an electron hole pair. So there will be formation of many electrons and holes when light falls on it. This is one a concept which you should know first. The second concept here is because you have made this PN junction to conduct into reverse bias condition. This reverse bias condition will be acting as forward bias for the minority charge carriers. That means with this type of arrangement of voltage, okay, the minority charge carriers of P side have to move here and the minority charge carriers of N side have to move here. Okay, so now Initially, when they are moving, they will combine with each other and there will be no flow of reverse current also. So when there is no light falling on this device, there will be no flowing of charge carriers. But when light falls on this device, there will be electron hole pairs generated as we have seen earlier. And these electron hole pairs will increase the minority flow of carriers. And hence we say, as light falls on it, as more light falls on it, more photons fall on it, many covalent bonds break and many electron hole pairs are generated and the current flowing through the device will go on increasing. So that means light energy falling will be converted into electrical energy. This is what is the basic concept of photodiode. So here you can see when the photons are incident, these are incident photons, so that that is nothing but your light energy. This is light energy. The PN junction is connected in reverse bias. This P and N is connected in reverse bias, so you can see your reverse bias. So P is connected to negative terminal, N is connected to positive terminal. And here you can see there are many electron and hole pairs generated because the photons are incident. So these are electrons, these are electrons. Now electrons will be attracted toward the positive terminal of the battery. And these are holes, holes will be attracted towards the negative terminal of the battery. And this is how the reverse current starts increasing as the light falls on this photodiode. And as a whole, we say that a light is converted into electrical energy, okay? So as more light falls on it, there will be more current flowing through the device. So here we can see the theory photodiodes. This is a special PN junction diode operated, operated in reverse bias as we have seen earlier. 
and it is designed with a transparent window to allow light to fall on it. When photons with, with greater energy, energy greater than the energy gap of the semiconductor fall on it, electron hole pairs are generated. The diode is designed in a manner that the, these electron hole pairs are generated in or near the depletion region. Also, the electric field at the junction ensures that the electrons and holes are separated before they are recombined. Further, the direction of the electric current is to ensure that the electrons reach the N side and holes reach the P side. This gives rise to an EMF. Current flows on connecting an external load. Also, the magnitude of this photocurrent depends on the intensity of the incident light. The direct correlation between the two is easily observed on the application of reverse bias. Hence, a photodiode can detect optical signals. Next, we'll go to see the second photoelectronic device, which is called as light emitting diode, LED. The light emitting diode is a PN junction diode. So this device will also be having P-type semiconductor and N-type semiconductor joined together. It is a specially doped diode. The doping is heavy here. And it is made up of a special type of semiconductors. Okay, so this is made up of special type of semiconducting materials so that whenever it is forward biased, uh, we want light to be emitted from this device. So light will be emitting from this device. That means electrical energy will be converted into light energy. So we first we'll see the structure and then we'll see how it works. So this is a form of LED is what you get commercially in the market. So here we have shown many other LEDs which can come out with many colors. Now depending upon the material used we can have different colors like shown here different colors LEDs. So whenever we connect a electrical connection to it whenever this PN junction is now forward biased it will emit light. So now here we are concentrating on the forward biasing of this device. It will be having two terminals. One terminal which will be longer and other terminal will be little shorter. The longer terminal will be called as cathode. The shorter terminal will be called as anode. So anode cathode. So with the help of anode cathode we can understand that wherever the anode terminal is there that will be connecting to the p-type semiconductor and wherever cathode terminal is there, it will be connecting to the entire semiconductor. So it is a PN junction. So here, this is the symbol of LED. So here you can see a anode terminal. So it is a two terminal, same like your diode. And here you have cathode terminal. You have shown this arrow. This is the arrow and this is the bar. And one extra thing what is shown here is the emission of this light. So here you can see light is emitted. So, it is a light emitting diode. So, the semiconducting materials used here are such that they will give a provision of light emission. So, here we can see a construction of LED. So, here you can see this P type semiconductor. So, this is P region. So, this top blue color region is shown. This is your P region. This is P region in which holes will be the majority charge carriers. And then here you have your N region. This is your N region. And in between whatever depletion layer you have, that is called as active region. So th that is the region which is going to be used for emission of light. So here, as usual, we'll be having a P-type semiconductor. We'll be having a N-type semiconductor. And in between, we'll be having the active region between this p-type and n-type semiconductor. Now, this is how the construction of LED is. So here at the p-type you have a terminal called as anode and the n-type you have a terminal called as cathode. Now here again you can see the structure of LED uh, within the case as we go towards more practical viewing. So here you can see you have your p-type material. This is P region, this is N region. So P region is connected to a terminal, a positive terminal, which will be called as anode. So it is a positive terminal. And N will be connected to a negative terminal, 
which will be called as cathode. So this is how a practical structure looks like. And in between P and N region, you have this active region. Now, more detailed structural diagram you can see here. You will be having P type semiconductor, N type semiconductor, and active region. Okay. So here we know that in P type semiconductor, the charge carriers, the majority charge carriers will be holes. So here you will be having holes as majority charge carriers. And in N type semiconductor, the majority charge carriers will be electrons. So, N type we have electrons here. Now, here this diode, this arrangement will be done in forward bias. Forward bias means the negative terminal will be connected to negative of a battery, and positive terminal will be connected to positive of a battery. Okay, so this diode will be forward bias. Now, when it is forward bias, what will happen is majority charge carriers move from P type to N type. And here, holes are going to move from P type to N type. And electrons are going to move from N type to P type. Okay. Now, this combination, this crossing over starts. So, when the diode is forward biased, electrons are sent from N type semiconductor to P type semiconductor where they are minority carriers and holes are sent from P type semiconductor to N type semiconductor where they are minority carriers. Okay, now this is the important thing to understand. Holes will travel from P to N. Once they come into N, they are actually minority carriers in N, but they were majority carriers in P. Similarly, when electrons go from N to P, they were majority carriers in N, but once they go to P, they will be minority carriers. At the junction boundary, concentration, that is the amount of minority carriers increases compared to the equilibrium concentration. Thus, at the junction boundary, on either side of the junction, excess minority carriers are there. Many minority carriers are there at the junction boundary. And these minority carriers, will recombine with the majority carriers which are going to flow because of forward bias. Just understand this point. This is just reverse point of photodiode. Here, the minority charge carriers which are present near the boundary, near the uh, junction. Now, those minority charge carriers will combine, recombine with the majority charge carriers, that is holes from P side and electrons from N side, which are going to flow because of the forward bias connection, they will recombine. And when electron and holes are going to recombine, when they recombine, on recombination, the energy is released in the form of photons. That is a light energy. Photons with energy equal to or slightly less than the band gap is emitted. When the forward current of the diode is small, the intensity of light emitted is small. But as the forward current increases, the intensity of light, that is number of photons, will increase and it reaches a maximum. Further increase in forward current results in decrease in light. So here if you see the theory of light emitting diode, a LED is a heavily doped PN junction which emits spontaneous radiation. Uh, radiation under forward bias, that is what we have told earlier, it is covered in a capsule with a transparent cover allowing the emitted light to come out. Being forward biased, electrons move from N to P side and holes move from P to N side. Also, the concentration of the minority carriers is higher near the junction as compared to the equilibrium concentration. Hence, at the junction on either side, excess minority carriers recombine with majority carriers this releases energy in the form of photons. The photons emitted have energies equal to or less than the band gap. Another thing to note here is that the intensity of the emitted light is small when the forward current is small. The intensity of the emitted light increases as the current increases and reaches the maximum value. After this, an increase in forward current leads to a decrease in light intensity. A commercially available LEDs can emit red, yellow, orange, green, blue lights. LEDs are used extensively in remote controls, optical communications, etc. So if you go to see the advantages of LED, 
the advantage of led is number one the brightness of light emitted by led depends on the current flowing through the led hence the brightness of led can be easily controlled by varying the current second is light emitting diodes consume low energy third is leds are very cheap and readily available fourth is leds are light and wet fifth is they are smaller in size sixth is leds have longer lifetime seventh is leds operate very fast they can be turned on and off in very less time so they are used in optical communication eighth is leds can emit different colors of light as we have seen earlier disadvantages of led number one leds need more power to operate than normal pn junction diode number two luminous efficiency of led is low that is the light intensity which comes out of led is low because we are going to compare now led with laser so if you compare leds with laser both are light emitting devices but the intensity of light emitted by led will be less than the light emitted by laser then applications of led they can be used in many applications so here are few applications to name number one a burglar alarm system number two a calculators number three a picture phones number four a traffic signals number five digital computers and so on there are many applications of next we'll go to see what do we mean by solar cell so here is the basic definition a solar cell is a pn junction which generates emf emf means electromotive force it is similar to your potential difference measured in voltage so a voltage a potential difference a voltage is developed whenever light falls on a solar cell so when a solar cell is a pn junction which generates emf when solar radiation falls on it the working principle is similar to photodiode so in photodiode we have seen a photodiode connected in reverse bias condition and then when the light falls on it the current goes on increasing that that is what we have seen now here in solar cell we will be not having any external electrical connection to make it reverse bias or anything like that so we'll just be having the device solar cell and whenever light falls on it it will give you a emf which is nothing but a potential difference a voltage will be developed so here the working principle is similar to photodiode except that no external bias is applied and the junction area is much larger enable that that is to enable solar radiation incident so here we see the structure this is how a simple pn junction solar cell looks like so here you can see you have p type semiconductor you have n type semiconductor this will be the back contact and here it will be having the front contact and then light falls on it so okay so when light is going to fall on it the electron holes which are generated now those electron holes which are generated will be swept away by the depletion region electric field the depletion region electric field that is polarity of the depletion region electric field will see that the electron hole pairs they are generated as we have seen in photodiode in that same way electron hole pairs will be generated and electrons will be made to move on one end and holes will be made to move on another end because of that electric field of the depletion region and that is why the complete device on one side will become positive and on the other side it becomes negative and you can take it as a emf that is electromotive force or it is a potential difference voltage is formed as light falls on it so here you can see the theory when sunlight falls on a solar cell the emf is generated due to these three processes that is emf that is electromotive force that is voltage is developed because of this processes number one generation of electron hole pairs due to light flows to the junction as we have seen in photodiode number two separation of electrons and holes due to the electric field of the depletion region this is very important electrons and holes will be made to move electrons are swept to the n side and holes are swept to the p side number three a collection the electrons reaching the n side are collected by the front contact and the holes reaching the p side are connect are, are collected by the back contact thus p side becomes positive and n side becomes negative giving rise to photovoltage this is important photovoltage a voltage is developed in that device 
because one side will become positive, one side will become negative. So a voltage will be developed, which is called as electromotive force. The a diagram shows an external load connected to a solar cell here. So here, this is the external load. Here you can see this is the external load, which is named as RL. And this is your solar cell. So as light falls on it, now this will act as a voltage source. The voltage is applied. When the voltage is applied, current starts flowing. When this current is flowing through the load, okay, the load can use the current because it has been developed. The current is flowing because of the voltage developed in the device which is called a solar cell okay now here this solar cell will be acting as a uh, source of voltage okay so because of this voltage the current is flowing in the circuit and that current can be used by the load rl so here you can also see the vi characteristics that is the voltage current characteristics which are shown for the circuit so when an external load is connected as shown in the earlier circuit a photo current IL flows through the load. The a characteristics which is shown in this is the VI characteristics that there is a voltage current a characteristics of the solar cell. So here you can see it is shown in the fourth quadrant. This is because a solar cell does not draw current but it supplies the same to the load. So just understand this point. The solar is not going to be driven by any electric current or any electric voltage. The solar cell itself is a source of voltage. So it is going to draw, it is going to give a current to the load. Okay, so here you can see the open circuit voltage point on the voltage axis. And here you can see the short circuit current point on the current axis. This is how you can show the voltage and current in relation with a solar cell. So the correlation is shown in the fourth quadrant because the solar cell does not draw current but supplies it to the load. Also remember that sunlight is not always required for a solar cell. A light having a frequency greater than the band gap suffices. So any light with photon energy is greater than the band gap will, will, can, will make a voltage formation in this solar cells. And these solar cells are used to power electronic devices in satellites and space vehicles and also as power supply to some calculators. Thank you students.